Hi guys, this is Master Coach Tony Morgan and today's video is on the ideal WLX RS40. So this boiler is very, very old. It's basically been installed in 1986 and it's still been going all that time. So we call out to this boiler, the customer says the boiler works and then the pilot goes off after about 10 to 15 minutes. So we're going to see if we can repair it. If not, it's going to need a new boiler. But for you guys looking at this type of appliance, you might think you've never seen one before. So I'm just going to take a little tour around it and see what you think. This is the um, timer. This is an old Randall 102. And that's the isolation switch. So these are quite popular in that era. So I'll just turn the power off. Looking at the pipe work at the top of the boiler there, this is a gravity system. It costs two pipes for the flow return for the heating, and two pipes for the flow return going up to the cylinder. And if one is a gas. So on these type of boilers, you can tell if it's fully pumped. If it's fully pumped, there'll just be two pipes coming off the top of the boiler. So for you guys, this is quite educational. To get access into this boiler, you've got these side things here, these need to come off, they might push up, or they're coming off like that. Because behind this, at the back, it's got two wing nuts. There's that wing nut there, what I was referring to. And there's one here as well. So on the other side, them wing nuts have got to come off. And then this whole thing will lift off then after that. So you can see now there's a ring up there. Cut the sides off. So this is the pipe work of the same. Here and here. And that's a gas. This one here. This is with the wing nut removed. You can see that thread there. And the other side is hard to see. Just taking off the one nut. see that one there this is it removed the case is now off and this is what's inside this big beast now this massive boiler it's only 40,000 BTUs compared to a modern boiler be half the size that's how they did it in them days big massive cast iron heat exchanger giving all the heat so there's a lot of heat loss from this boiler, very inefficient. I'm looking at the thermocouple now. So looking at there you can see the tip looks corroded, burnt away. So that will give it a defect that the part that's not been staying on. So we're going to have to change the thermocouple. I'm just going to undo that nut there. Just the wrong way, wrong way. That's it. Yep. You might be able to get up your finger. Yeah. But you might need a bit more. So as I said, this bar is a really old one. But we're going to see if we can rescue it one more time before it goes to the graveyard. <laughs> what we need to do now is just pull it downwards. All the way down. Yeah, right? all the way down. That's it. That'll do. Oh, right there. Yeah. See if it's a bit come out of there. A bit more, that's it. Okay, that'll do. I'm going to undo, there's two screws. You can see the head there, just undo that one. There's two of them at either side. Because what that is, that's like a clamp, you see, that holds a thermocouple, and the thermocouple's got to go behind that clamp. Otherwise, oh, right. it won't be able to get inside the boiler and seal properly. The thermocouple goes into the back of the gas valve 
some flux from underneath here so that's where it is so we're going to undo that nut there out the gas valve It and that's, it. Yeah, that's, loose. that's it. We're going to cut the thermocouple to get it easier. Let's see you can... From here? Yeah, let's cut it from there. That's there it. And then you pull it out now. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Good. This is our replacement thermocouple, which is a universal one. So what we do first on the universal one, we're going to use this nut here. So Caraman, you're going to shove that nut mm -hmm. along that end there, right round. That's it. Then you're going to get this shaft here in that position and shove that on there. That's it. That's it. We're now going to get this end and shove it through that gap. Just slide it down. But try not to fall. Yeah, just keep it like that. Just go as much as you can. Go on, just go, that's it. The end just fell off, that's it. Mm. That's it. So we're going to bend this round. And then so bend, yeah, that yeah. bend it round so it goes up. Okay. Into that this hole. This one, yeah? Yeah. Just straighten it a little bit. That's about what we need. We need to that's it, just get that bit straight Let's there. Straighten it, yeah. Up there like that. Okay. And then that's got to get that thread, which it has. Yeah. Like okay. So we maneuvered the thermocouple around so we can put that clamp back on. So this clamp's got to go over there and put, you know, and then the screws are going to go back in. So I'll just do the first one, you get hold of this one. I'll put the screw in, so I'll put the screw in, just use the screw itself through the hole. Let's just see, let's just see if it's lined up. So I'll just, that's it. Right, you can get that first one in now. That can just hold it. Just, it should line up. That lined up, yeah. going in. Yeah. So, what's it like to do some hands on train like this, Caraman? Yeah, it's very good, of course. It's just you feel much more comfortable when you are doing some work outside. Yeah, very good. I recommend it. Yeah, I recommend it. Yeah, the next thing now we're mm -hmm. going to use one of these two nuts here. So we're going to use, if you look at these closely, one's got like a coarse thread and one's got a finer thread. Can you see the difference? Yeah. So we're going to use the one with a finer thread, which is this one, because that's for the Honeywell. And the one for the coarse thread is for the SIT gas valve. Right. So we're going to use this, this one. Okay. So what we're doing now, we're what going to we're get doing, yeah. that and slide it on, shove that up a bit, like that there. And then this should be cut out in, it, no, no. If you look here, it's got a thin bit there, there. It's going to go on there. That's it. Okay. That's the only way it can go on. 
because it's like crushed, oh, so it's flattened, so you can get that nut on. Okay. Yeah. So right. we're gonna now kind of manoeuvre this round. Might have to just make it. Let's see. Make it a bit more. Make another circle of it, and bring it round, and then into the back of the gas valve. So let's let's say let's bend this. Maybe. Cut it so like this. Like that. Yeah. And then maneuver it round again. And then bend it into the gas valve. But that pipe, that bit's got to be straight. Alright, yes, yeah, so you can get that on now. Have a look. Yep, yeah, so it's going into the gas valve. Yep, yeah, nice. Okay, and then just turn it up. These are lucky charms, these. So we'll just tighten that up and then we'll give it a light, see if the burner steps, see if the pilot light stays on. Now we're going to light the pilot light. So to light the pilot light, this is your piezo igniter. Okay. That's your gas bell. Push button, you push that in. Hold it in, click that till it lights, and then keep that on for about 30 seconds. Because what happens, the reason why you shove that in like that, yeah. well, there's two things. You shove it in to let the gas to the pilot light. The reason why you hold it on for 30 seconds, do you know why? Um, not sure. Right, okay, the reason why is when the pilot or the flame burns on the tip of the thermocouple okay that then creates a voltage that voltage goes down the thermocouple then it goes into here right right so basically that what you screwed into yeah inside the gas valve is a thermoelectric valve a solenoid right so that solenoid is then getting the voltage onto it. So the 30 seconds is to give it time to create the voltage to keep this in, oh. in. Oh. Because you're pressing it in, it's staying down. Right. So the voltage keeps it down. So if there's no, yeah. yeah. So that voltage keeps it down. By keeping it down, it's letting the gas in. go, yeah, in back up to the, the pilot to light the flame. Wow, okay, the yeah. flame creates then the voltage to keep the solenoid open. Right. Okay. So it keeps, it's like a like a vicious circle. So it's going round and round. Right, okay. Nice one, that's it, yeah. So that's if the enough. flame yeah. disappears, then there's no voltage. Oh. The voltage then will make the solenoid snap back and shut off the gas to the pilot light so that's the like a flame failure device so that's how it works and that's why you've got to give it that time to let it to let the voltage voltage yeah in the first place yeah so that's how it works so that a couple works and that circle what it's created so if it goes off after we let go, it means the voltage has not been established. And obviously, you start again. Give it about a minute before you actually attempt. Okay. And then have another go. Okay. So, let's have a go. Let's have a go, yeah. That so, one first. Yeah, yeah. yeah, keep that in first. And then, that's it. Then All the way in, yeah. Yeah, piezo now. Keep, that's it. That's our flame. So you're going to keep it on like a set at 30 seconds, 30 seconds yeah. to keep the flame, well, to create the voltage. So we'll do it in real time so you can see this. It's a big pilot, that. Right, let go slowly. That's it. Let, let go, it's fine. So it's staying on. So we now know the voltage is being created to keep the solenoid open, to keep the gas to the pilot light, 
and that's now creating that vicious circle. Okay, yeah, right. So, do you understand that? Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, to new guys who don't know this, here's your masterclass on how a thermocouple works. Okay, so I think that's job done because the part light wasn't staying on. No, no. So, that problem? yeah, that was a problem. I'm going to sort it. Yep, so all we're going to do now is put the case back on and we'll run it and see how it behaves. To put this case back on now, we're going to locate these lugs through that hole and the top one, same not on the other side. These are the lugs here and here. What we've got to aim for to get it on. Actually, I'm going to have a go. So, see what you can see. So, I'm just lifting it up. I'm feeling here. You can feel it through there. Move that one and that one. So I'm going to put my hand up here. And like that. That'll do for now. And then we can get the top one off. You can hopefully see the flame through the window because the burner is now on. So that's going to be it for us, from us on this video. So that's all done on this old banger boiler. So hopefully you learnt something on that, especially about the thermocoupler, how it works and this type of boiler, if you ever have to do this yourself. So that's going to be it on this video. Just got to put that side panel back on and then we're out of here. So that's it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.